Hey folks, um, so here's a quick rundown of the stop motion add-on. Um, so if you have difficulty installing add-ons, you just go to preferences and the edit menu um, and you click this little install button, browse to where you download the zip and when you hit enter there, uh, your interface will look like this and then you just have to check on this checkbox to make sure it's installed. It's in beta, that's why there's a little warning. Looks like I have some error here, <laughs> never mind. Um, okay, so next step. Um, once the add-on is running, um, it should be visible here in the um, toolbar, which, um, got that on screen cast keys, which you can enable and disable with the N key or just by uh, clicking on this little triangle. Um, so it's in the uh, stop mo um, category here, and uh, so long and it will have one button in it only at first. So so long as a mesh object selected, um, you should be able to click on the initialize button and you get your first interface. Um, so um, let's go through and see what we can do. So first of all, this is like sort of responsive, so you can get. Uh, different size icons or full text, uh, depending on your preference. I'll leave it at full text so we can see what we're doing right now. So uh, the main thing that happened when you initialize keyframe that's visible, other than this showing up, is that there's a single keyframe here. Now this keyframe represents sort of a drawing, um, basically a mesh shape at the current frame, which is this cube. Now to add another one, we can go to a different frame. Let's say we go two frames. Um, and click on the insert keyframe button. Now we have two, they're identical. They're both the cube, but uh, we can go into edit mode. Um, I'll just hit tab um, and um, you can edit one of them. And you can do anything you want. So I can, um, I can change the topology um, as much as I want here. Um, and uh, then if we uh, go back to the previous frame, it's still there. So we have this um, two frames that are different. Um, and if we go out of edit mode, we can still kind of see that change. So that's adding a new keyframe. So um, you don't have to use edit mode. You can use any uh, mode you like to change the shape. So for instance, in object mode, you have two options. Um, you can, if you have another object in your scene, let's just add a, um, a UV sphere, and uh, if you uh, shift select your stop motion object, so it's the one selected last, um, and let's again move to free frames and click insert keyframe, and now the shape is that selected object. So that's another way to change the shape. Um, you can also add to the current shape. So if I add a, a monkey, um, and I want that monkey to kind of be positioned here relative to my old keyframe. Then again, shift selecting in the same way. Let's go to a new frame and now we'll click on join meshes. And it's basically the same as join mesh, except it joins it as a keyframe for this object. So now we have these keyframes. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can change things in sculpt mode if you want. So the only thing about setting modes is that uh, avoid using this menu, um, use this menu instead. Um, or you can use control tab, that's fine. Or you can use tab, that's also fine to change your um, mode. So um, let's just do it graphically right now. So I can go into uh, sculpt mode. And once again, I could um, go to keyframes and I could sculpt this a little bit. Um, and you notice I just forgot to hit the insert keyframe. So I just um, sculpted on the previous frame. So I can undo that, hit insert keyframe and sculpt. And that happens really often that I find the insert keyframe workflow to be kind of annoying. And so the next slash new keyframe is a little bit better. So in stock blender, if you use the up and down arrow key, you can jump between the previous and next frames. If you get to the end, you get this no more keyframes to jump to in this direction warning. 
Um, that still is the case with stop motion object, except if you go to the right end, to the, the newest end, and you click um, the up arrow, it actually just inserts a new keyframe there. So it's like you just went two frames and inserted. And you can actually change how many frames it goes. Um, so now you can just up arrow sculpt, up arrow sculpt, up arrow sculpt, and you have this um, really easy way of changing the keyframes. Um, and that works in all the modes again. So I can go into, for instance, object mode and do up arrow and I have a new frame. Um, and um, if I want to change where it is, like I said, you have this number. So I could make this, um, let's say, take uh, increments of 10. Notice now we have 10, a gap of 10 frames. And if I up arrow again, I'm going to get a 10 frame gap again. So it's going to remember that. So um, yeah, let's just leave it for now. Um, so let's do some uh, just simple animation um, just to show um, one of the other features. So uh, let's work in edit mode for this. And I'm just going to do the up arrow thing. Um, so I'll do up arrow. And let's make it to um, just for ease of use. And I'm just going to move it a bit with each time. So I'm just going to, you know, this is a very stupid animation. Of course, you could just animate your object if you were doing this, but this is just for illustration. So now I have this little moving thing. The reason I did that is just to show the onion skin feature. So if I click on enable here, we get some onion skins. And um, you can kind of scrub between them. Now I found that the onion skins look a little nicer if you disable the outline, object outline, it makes the intersections look a lot better. Um, and so, you know, you can see that we have them here. If I go out of edit mode, it's kind of more obvious. So um, let's just go here where it's moving so they're kind of easy to see. So um, in this panel here, you can change the frame offset. It's at two by default. I can maybe set it to four, right? So it's more spaced apart. You can change the opacity. Um, you can change the colors, um, and um, you can also uh, change a number of uh, onion skins. So uh, this is the past, and this is the future. So if I hit two here, we have two in the past um, and two in the future. So I can have more or less onion skins um, as I wish. And obviously, you can disable them just by clicking the enable button again. So that's basically onion skinning. Um, the export OBJ and import OBJ features are kind of esoteric. Um, so um, let's just demonstrate it real quick. Um, so if I, I'm going to split the window. Oh, no, no, not like that. Um, whoops. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I don't know what I undid. Um, OK, so um, let's uh, split the window um, this way. There we go. And I'm going to change this to a text editor, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so uh, I can go to a keyframe, for instance, this one, and I can click on Export OBJ. And I've exported an OBJ file without any uh, interaction um, with the current keyframe um, as <coughs> its shape. And I can open that OBJ. So. Um, I'll have to browse to where my file is. Um, actually, let's uh, save the file because I should have saved it. And let's go save it just somewhere. Call it delete. Um, and export the OBJ again. And now I should be able to import that file. Um, so I, I don't think you can see my pop-up, but it's called delete underscore cube underscore frame. Um, it basically has the file name followed by the object name and then the word frame because it's a frame. So here's the OBJ for this. Now why is this cool? It's because you can edit the OBJ and then re-import it as a frame to create cool glitchy effects. So let's uh, sort of um, navigate, sorry, go here, navigate to frames again. And I'm going to just grab um, a bunch of vertices and just shuffle them. 
So I'll just control X and scroll down so that it's a bit dramatic. Hit enter and paste it. So I've just kind of scrambled the vertex order and I must make sure to save this. Now any text editor will work. You don't have to use blenders. Um, this is just so I can show it in the screencast. And if I click on import, now we have a slightly glitchier um, version here where some of the faces have gotten mangled because the vertex order has changed. Um, now I can keep on doing this sort of um, sort of progressively, right? So I can create kind of a progressive degradation. So let's just do one more. Um, so I'll do a bigger one this time. So let's delete that. And let's scroll pretty far down in the list so we mangle the order of a lot more vertices. And just paste it here and then save it. And now let's import it again and we have a much more severe um, distortion. So there's a, in the readme for the, um, for the add-on, there's a link to uh, the website um, that inspired this feature. It's um, a cool, it's basically 3D glitching and it's inspired by like data moshing. Um, so there's not much more to show. Um, so this is behind the scenes stuff for people who are doing more um, advanced stuff. So if I go to the modifier panel here, um, you can see how the add-on works. It actually has two geometry nodes uh, modifiers and the animation keyframes are on the first one. Um, uh, this is why um, this is pretty safe to use as an add-on because once you've done some animation, all it depends on is Blender itself. So that means you don't need the add-on loaded to view the animation or render it. So you can render it on a render form without any problem. Um, you, the add-on is only there so you can actually change the animation easily um, with these little nice features. Um, so the way it works is, um, well, let's skip over to geometry nodes and have a look. So basically it's a little bit hackish. It's pulling a collection in um, and pulling the objects out of that collection and then instancing them on a single vertex at the center of the object. Now that instance is using an index, um, so it's an alphabetical in index, and that's what's getting animated here. Uh, so what, where the heck is this collection? Um, you can see that it's here, but it's nowhere visible here. Uh, there didn't seem to be any reason to clutter up our scene with a collection that we're not supposed to render. So it's in the file, and it's fake user, so it doesn't go away, but here's our stop motion frames, right? So they're all here, and they're just alphabetical. Um, you can see that that's how they work. So 14 here references uh, this 14. So like you can think of this as a drawing number, right? So drawing number 14 is on this frame. It doesn't have to be on frame 14. It could be on frame 20, for instance. Uh, that's entirely de determined by this. So this is kind of like this 14 means drawing number 14, right? Um, and uh, the onion skins, as you may have seen, are in this onion skin folder, which has got renderability turned off, so it's not annoying. Also, selectability is turned off. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is that if I add, let's add a, a subdivision surface modifier um, just to demonstrate this. So where is it? Okay. So notice nothing happened. Uh, no subdivision is happening right now. Um, that's because of the instancing in this add-on. So when it outputs an instance, there's no actual geometry in the modifier stack. Um, and that means that there's nothing for the subdivision surface modifier to work on. So I added this realizer here, which is just a single node. It does a realize instances. If you enable it, it's enabled by on render by default, then you can see the subsurf doing its magic. Now the reason I have it disabled is because um, uh, it's kind of nice to work sculpt on fairly dense meshes with this add-on and this gets slow if you have a lot of uh, vertices, if you have a dense mesh. Um, but once you enable it, you can use the modifier stack as usual. usual. Um, and the neat thing is you can, um, let's do a new file for this one just to be a little bit um, clear. So um, let's add a uh, UV sphere just so it's got more 
vertices and I'll just go and initialize this so I'll make this toolbar because I like that so the neat thing is that I can use any mode so let's actually go over to our modifiers I'm going to add um, I'm going to add a displace uh, modifier right so let's add displace um, and um, what I'm going to do now is go into uh, weight paint and um, let's uh, weight paint something right um, and let's get out of weight paint now um, now let's turn on the realizer so we can see what the displace modifier does and let's use that group we just painted so now we have done a little bulge in our object now the neat thing is I can go uh, let's go into uh, weight paint mode again so we can kind of see what's going on so I can go to another frame and paint new weight and go to another frame and paint new weight so I can do um, I can actually stop motion animate weights um, I can also do the same with uh, vertex colors so I could um, let's go here um, and go to vertex paint mode let's pick some color so I can also paint on every frame right so every frame gets its own kind of vertex color painting so you can use that to your advantage when you're um, doing some advanced animation with rig characters and trying to do stop motion on top of it um, so yeah that's the other thing um, object mode so there's not much more to tell um, sometimes depending on what you do the updater will stay running so uh, for it to work say in edit mode um, it needs to have a running updater here um, that's because unlike the modifier working in object mode you need to actually get to the mesh data when you're editing it um, so uh, let's just demonstrate that here by doing a few edits um, so now we have some frames that are different right and um, let's go to object mode let's stop this oh, I need to stop this so let's go to edit mode here and now if I scrub you'll see there's no updating and that's because the update handler isn't running if you hit play here it will run and do its thing and uh, you can tab out and it will automatically stop um, like that um, so that's basically it um, popping in and out of these modes lets you uh, turn on and off this updater um, and uh, you don't need it in object mode as I said it's just there for the sub object modes so that you can actually work on the mesh data um, otherwise you couldn't actually edit it um, so that means that if you do render while you're in edit mode you might have some crashes so you should probably only render when you're in object mode um, I think that's about it. Um, hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.